the best bet is bottled water and you need to make sure that's sealed because a lot of places what they'll do is they will they will refill the water with tap water and it's all this bottled water and that's not pretty i just go straight for bottled water it's terrible you'll go through a million plastic bottles but if you're somewhere where you can't drink the water you don't want to drink the water there's probably poo in it four liters of water so like a milk carton size it's probably about three euro so I kind of just bought those when I needed them and just kind of kept them handy whenever I did. And yeah, didn't really drink the water too much. But the locals didn't even drink the water. So no one drank it. It wasn't safe to drink. People would brush their teeth with it, shower with it, but it wasn't something you'd drink. Uh, I think that that is uh, dependent on, on where you're going and to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, find out whether it's safe to drink the water uh, or, or not. And uh, that if in doubt, uh, uh, yeah, if in doubt, purify or, 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 or uh, buy water, uh, but that in several places, uh, uh, tap water is fine. And if that's, the, uh, yeah, as I say, easy enough to find out. For the longest time, I was putting those little purification tablets in a lot of them taste like crap. They don't taste good. You just, you take for granted so much this, just having drinkable, cold, refreshing water right out of the tap. In Jordan, it was so hot that you never stop sweating, so you should probably just be sipping water all day from your camel pack. I think I had a five liter camel pack that I would go through well, at least once a day. A lot. <laughs> um, you can never really drink enough water there. It was so hot and so humid. Well, um, when you're in a, obviously when you're in a really harsh and desert environment, that's just brutally hot and you can't escape from the heat anywhere. If you are on the Jordan trip, um, you need to drink a lot of water. I mean, each person's obviously different. I'm a pretty big guy, so I had a, you know, a big frame to, to feed. So you need, you need to, to drink a lot of water. I know there's one day. And with that being said, there's also, you can have water poisoning. So don't be silly and drink yourself, drink water until you puke because that's not a good thing either. But there's one day um, where I was extremely dehydrated due to events from the night before in combination with the, the heat, and I drank, it was 13 liters of water I drank throughout the entire day. And that's, I mean, just, if you're thirsty, drink. And don't, you know, don't put that on the back burner. It's, you need to drink water. You need to. Even if it, even if it tastes kind of gross and it's hot, it doesn't matter, it's a lifesaver. You, you operate so much better and it's just way healthier for you if you drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water, hydrate or die. I eat everything. I love street food, but there's some places where you have to be really careful. Cambodia, for instance, you're not supposed to eat the street food, whereas the surrounding countries, that's, you should, that's all you should eat. It's awesome. Um, in Egypt, I ate the street food and never got sick. Other people did. For me, like, I ate the street food. I ate greens, I ate watermelon, I ate it all and I didn't have a problem. To be uh, uh, within reason uh, adventurous uh, with, with, with food. Look to see what the locals buy. That is more often going to be the best food as well as the safest food. As well, use common sense. When you see something and it looks not comfortable, and you don't want to eat it, maybe you shouldn't eat it. Maybe you should hold off. That being said, you're in another country. Don't spend your entire trip eating cornflakes. You're in another country. Experience the culture. Experience the food. The food is part of it. To be honest, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be willing to go out and you know be adventurous and go traveling somewhere, try the local cuisine. Try what's you know. Ask locals what you know. What's your favorite dish? What do you like to eat? Try it. Just. You know, I mean, if it looks gross and there's flies all over it and it doesn't look like it's cooked well, then don't eat it. You know, if it's cooked well and it's something that people eat there, try it. I mean, it shouldn't hurt you. Again, you have to research it before you go. If you're going somewhere with lots of mosquitoes, bring bug spray. If you're going somewhere where you've heard there's bad bugs, bring bad bug spray. I don't know. Bring some antibiotics <clears throat> in case you get sick or get an infection and just start taking them. 
um, what are they called? A hostel sheet or a sleeping bag liner. They're really useful in places like the Middle East or Asia. If you go to Europe, you won't need them. They won't even let you use them because they actually wash their sheets in most of the places. But in a lot of the pla in a lot of places you'll go, you'll wish you had one if you don't, because you won't want to sleep on the disgusting train mattress. If you're in a place and it's you know kind of dirty, there's I don't know, there's not really a whole lot you can do about it. You're not gonna want to. Well, I mean, you could try asking for new sheets and stuff like that. Apparently, that's a big that's a big thing. Is if your sheets look really dirty, or even if they don't, and you're totally freaked out, just ask them for new sheets. But if you're unless you're at a really fancy place, they'll probably just say no. But you just kind of you have to embrace it. You gotta embrace the lifestyle. You gotta jump in, feet first, and I mean, just yeah, bring the stuff you're gonna need if you get sick, right? Uh, bring Advil. Bring your Tylenol. You know. That way, you at least can deal with the headaches if you get any. Um, sunscreen, no brainer. Like, let's be honest. Um, in terms of infections or anything else, if you bring like a, uh, say like a first aid kit, that'd be good. Just a simple one: band aids, polysporin, gauze pads, that type of stuff. If I'm traveling in countries where there is a chance of, an, of gastrointestinal infections, um, upper body respiratory infections, I usually go to my doctor and ask for prescriptions for both those eventualities and then take those prescriptions with me. If I don't need them, then I leave them with a, a doctor or a nurse to drop them off at a hospital in, the, in that developing country because they'll use them. Otherwise, if I do get sick, I've got something that's going to carry me through until I can get some, some help from, from a doctor. It's important to check out your health issues as soon as they arise and not wait. Common travel health mistakes is not dealing with the issue as soon as you have it. Say, like, you get an infection right away, right? Oh, it's just, no, it's fine. You know, just not deal with it as soon as anything happens. Like, get it dressed up, get it cleaned, do everything that you can, be proactive is the little last thing that you want is to end up in a hospital somewhere over there. I've heard, I, I think it's much more likely in, uh, uh, in, in countries in which there are issues uh, to, get in, uh, it, to, to get in trouble uh, almost uh, uh, by happenstance. So uh, uh, having an ice cream cone uh, that, that uh, I realize that if you are in, uh, it, it, in, in countries with issues to be uh, con constantly aware of, of, of those uh, those issues. Don't take it upon yourself to just go picking berries and that sort of thing. I mean, I'm sure most people aren't that stupid and they, do, they don't do that sort of thing here. But yeah, don't, if you see like a little shrubbery that's got some fruit, some foreign fruit on it, and it looks exotic, it looks kind of tasty, and you're thinking, oh, that guy in that video told me to be adventurous and try the local cuisine. I saw that guy that's all like deranged and stuff eating that, so I'm going to try that too. No, not a good idea. Common sense, common sense. Yeah, so an example of some people being idiots. The first day we were in Jordan, uh, we got to our camp really early in the morning before the sun was really up, and some of the boys got kind of cocky, thinking it wasn't that hot yet, and decided to go for a run, only about 100 meters, and one of them ended up getting horrible heat stroke. He threw up and then passed out in his own vomit, and ended up laying in the lab all day with his eyes rolled back in his head. So think before you do stupid stuff.